Hey everybody, welcome back to the farm. Today we're in the garage. Uh, we had a rainstorm this morning and uh, now the sun's out and there's thunderstorms in the forecast for later on this afternoon, this evening, possibly severe uh, stuff, you know, 60 mile an hour wind type nonsense. So we're in the garage here. We've got the cabbed 5140 here and we've been having an issue with the power shift there's i guess kind of two particular ones uh downshifting there's four power shifts in there so downshifting from four to three and from two to one uh it, it kicks the tractor into neutral like the tractor just stops moving there's a light that blinks it still runs and everything but there's some electrical issue so what over the course of time we've tried to narrow it down to uh, there's four power shift switches, one for each of the four power shifts. Um, so what it looks like, those power shift switches are right here. Uh, this hose is in the way, but there's one up there, two, three, and four right here all in a row. Um, so two of them look like they've been replaced. Um, the first, the top one, and the uh, second one up from the bottom, I guess you could say. The very bottom one has some moisture on it, and it's retaining dust and dirt, so possibly leaking. And the third one up is just completely different than the other two. So it almost looks like, uh, I'm going to guess that that is power shift one, two, three, and four. I think they start from the bottom up. So I'm going to guess two and four possibly have been replaced. Um, they look newer, they look cleaner. So we're going to change three and one and see if that makes any difference. Um, we've tried some other electrical things, uh, playing with some stuff, and none of that stuff works. So this is what we came down to. Here's what they look like. Uh, pretty, pretty simple. You know, you just kind of unplug them and... That's uh, the ones that are in there have that part number kind of showing on them, the ones that look new, and the other ones don't. So that's why I'm thinking maybe somebody changed two of them. Um, I don't know if I said it, but these cost me, uh, they were, they're a Case IH part. Uh, here's the part number switch. Uh, oh, look at that, made in the USA. I don't see that too often, but there's the part number if you can read it. Uh, what were they, 140? 44 I think a piece is is what my price was on them so so anyway that's today's project I don't know how much of that I'll film maybe I'll try and show you along the way but it's such a small area that you know you try and film that and you end up being in the way like my arms and stuff end up being in the way more than anything so you can't really see much I'll see what I can do here and uh, we'll see how this video goes Okay, so we got our wire unplugged. It was pretty easy. And uh, I did kind of get the wrench in here. It's a little tight. I got the uh, Chinese wrench. Boy, that went on easier than it came, came off. Let's see if we can get another bite on here or not. That's the problem sometimes with these bigger wrenches. You go to get another bite and then you got nowhere to go with it. But... It did turn. Um, it wasn't a tremendous amount of uh, pressure on it. You know, not like you had to throw your whole body weight into it to get it to turn. So that's good. There we go. We're locked on again. I'm hoping it'll get to the point where we can just take it out by hand, but it's not looking good. So there's... Um, here, I'll show you quick. On the end of this, there's a little cap, and there's some thread sealant that they put right on there. So, I don't know how far in these things actually are. Last time I had a sensor that had the thread sealant on it, it was the oil pressure sensor, and I did a video on the tractor when it acted up with that issue and uh, <laughs> silly me 
I uh, tried to keep tightening it because there was a bunch of threads showing that had sealer on it too and uh, I ended up snapping the damn thing off and having to get another one and get the old one out it was not fun so I will learn that here when these snug up I will just stop so a couple hydraulic hoses here keeping the I guess if I had a stubby one inch wrench this job would be a little easier but I don't so if I had a bigger job to do here I think I would just uh, cut this wrench in half since it's just a cheap Chinese one sometimes I like the Chinese ones because they're skinnier like they're thinner and they're a little smaller so sometimes they I can almost turn it by hand sometimes they fit in places better than the nicer ones I wonder if I could get a pair of pliers in there trying not to damage these other wires that are floating around here it's loose oh no there it goes I guess there could be a tiny bit of fluid that possibly could come out here um, but not a tremendous amount to worry about so there we go there's the old one there's the old one right there yeah it's dripping it is dripping some oil not a huge flow but out oh, there it's starting to slow down we'll just see if we can get this guy put right back in there so we don't have to worry about that started with the easier one first the lower one I don't know if you can see it in the uh, shot right at the moment I know it's kind of dark in here but uh, the lower one is kind of buried down there there's some other hoses and stuff so all right I'm gonna tighten this up and uh, catch up with you guys in a minute all right it's about an hour later I had to go borrow some tools from a friend so what I've decided to do here uh, this one is just absolutely miserable to get to you can't get to it from the left you can barely get to it from the right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the wires off um, so that we can put a socket on the old one to get it out and then that way I only have to fight with oh, sorry you guys are gonna be in the way here I did take the battery box cover off just to see if that would buy me a tiny bit of extra space and uh, it did but not much so um, so this is the plan we'll take it out like this there we go and then I only have to fight with it getting it back in so what I think is gonna work the best one of the things I borrowed here is this little guy I think we'll be able to sneak that in there and uh, hopefully use that to tighten the new one back up well here we are I got that in and tightened up I just wanted to show you uh, what I ended up using in case you have to do this job if you had a short stubby little wrench you might be able to fit it in here but you're not going to get much of a turn on it uh, with that bracket there that holds the cab so um, that little guy there that, uh, that you hook the 3 8 drive into that did really well I was able to get about half a turn uh, out of it before I had to take it off and reposition it so that's what I would recommend probably took me 15 minutes to uh, get the new one back in and uh, tighten down so there we go okay so that's it um, I'm gonna take it out and test drive it I imagine it's gonna be all right um, I will give you an update to this in a little while probably a month or so to let you know if that solved the problem or not 
it was very sporadic. Um, it might go a whole week without doing anything, and then it might act up two, three times in a row, and then you might go another five days or two weeks, and it wouldn't act up, and then it would do it again. But uh, the problem for me is I'm getting ready to do some field work off on one of our lease properties, and we're going to be running up the road, and also up over that mountain. And the last thing I want to do is be going up the mountain and have, you know, do my downshift and have the tractor go into neutral. And then I have to start or stop in the middle of the hill and start over. And I'm not going to be able to do that in road gear. So it's going to be a long climb up the hill uh, in a lower, like a field gear. So uh, not only is that really not safe, especially coming down the hill, if you're bringing like a load of hay or something with you coming down the hill and you downshift and it throws it neutral. Uh, I mean, the brakes are good, but I really don't want to be relying on them coming down that couple miles there. So I want to make sure this is working good. I'm going to go use it here. I got to take the manure out with it. So um, I will keep you updated on that. If you don't hear from me about this and you want to know, send me a message or leave a comment, whatever, in a future video. And I'll be sure to let you know if that solved the problem. But overall, not a bad repair. So hope this helps somebody. Um, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the update to this thumbs up please uh bell icon so you don't miss the update as well and uh i guess i'll catch you guys on the next video thanks for watching